What's up, my brothers and sisters in Christ? I hope you guys are having such a blessed day today. And remember that the joy of the Lord is our strength. When so much persecution and waves of tribulation come on this side of eternity, just remember that God's grace is enough to keep us and deliver us from every temptation that, that God allows us to go through because it's the perfecting of the work of God in our life. Uh, I just want to come on here because I feel the heart of the Lord wanting me to share and comfort you guys today with the words of encouragement from the Word of God, which is the fact, guys, that if you're in Christ, know that the sufferings of God in this side of eternity, it grows us to conform to the image of Christ. A man who knew no sin became sin, right? That we might experience the riches of his glory and what it really means to have life. Because uh, this this earth, this world, um, the brothers and sisters in Christ on, in this world, not of this world, uh, experience the same things, okay? Uh, if you're a child of God, you're going to go through hurt. You're going to go through pain just as Christ suffered. But while we go through those things, it's our hope that we might be glorified with him through Christ Jesus. And we will, and you will, if you're in him. Uh, we're saved by grace through faith, 100%. But we will work for the Lord. We, we will experience what it really means to walk in Christ. If we abide in Him, walking in the Spirit, we have eternal life. And it's a beautiful thing to experience. Uh, but right now, guys, there's so many mockers. There's so many scoffers uh, hating people who preach the Word. And, you know, we're going to be hated just as Jesus was hated. Even if possible, even the people in your own family may persecute you, right? Uh there's a, there's a big difference for people who profess Jesus Christ with their mouths and people who truly believe in the heart. See, professing Jesus Christ with your mouth is something that a lot of people do to justify the way that they live this life. If they're totally indulging their everything in sin and saying, well, Jesus died for me so that I may live for him forever, live with him forever in eternity. But on this side of the eternity on, in the world as we're living right now, before we experience the glorified bodies, we can live how we want. Because Jesus died for me. Now that is something that is called using the grace of God for leviciousness, which is living your life totally in iniquity, abounding in sin. Even Paul says, shall we live in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So God forbid anybody teach you that God's grace is a license to sin and that we should do this because we're able to now. Now what but the Antichrist spirit would pervert the gospel to believe that sort of doctrine of a demon? Guys, we need to experience. We need to understand, and exp uh, and I know many of us have experienced spiritual warfare. But if we don't put on the full armor of God every single day, as Ephesians six declares, the shoes of peace, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit, we're going to be attacked, nonetheless. But without armor, we're going to feel it more. We're going we're to feel the pain. We're going to be hurt, and God's grace. Uh, is there, but it, you need to pray and ask that God's grace will cover you and give you strength to overcome. Um, I know for me especially, dude, so many people persecute me, and even in my family and, and, and friends, you know, uh, of the fact that, oh, you've been saying Jesus Christ has been coming for over two years now. Look, where is this promise? We need to understand that to God, a day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day in God's sight. It's been 2,000 years since Christ's crucifixion, his death, burial, and resurrection. That's only two days in God's eyes. But we're coming to the culmination of all the things in the Bible being prophesied to an end. And I will continue to preach the return of Christ because it will come at any moment. Like a thief in the night is what it compares it to, the coming of Christ. There will be two, wor two men working. One shall be taken, one shall be left. There shall be two men in a bed. One shall be taken, one shall be left. We need to be ready, guys. So I'm going to continue to say, guys, guess what? Be ready for Christ. Jesus is coming. I don't care how many people come against me because I'm not here to please people. I'm here to please the Lord. I'm here to please the maker of my very own soul. Remember that you are a created creature. You're a created being with the ability to choose for God or choose for the world. To be your own God or choose life. The true one and only God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one spirit. Understand this, life is but a vapor, guys. But I want to encourage you today that God is the author of your salvation. It's not that you chose God, but that He chose you to conform before the foundations of the earth was created. He chose you, a peculiar people set apart for His glory, set apart for sure sufferings, set apart for sure to be hated upon, but knowing, guys, that it's only a temporary thing, right? 
Do we, do we have the truth of God embedded in our soul to where when we go through trials, we're still going to stand firm no matter the, the turbulence, right? In a, in a plane, there's turbulence. But do you go, oh, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to die. No, no, you, you, you wait it out. There needs to be that type of faith in the body of Christ to, to pray it out. Instead, instead of just soaking in your misery and thinking you're hopeless, oh, this is at the end, oh, becoming a Christian is so hard. Where in the Bible did Jesus say that it was going to be a breeze? He said it was going to be the opposite. You shall be taken up and imprisoned for my name, some people, killed for my name. We need to count the cost of what it really means to follow God, especially in these last days when, when wickedness is grown and good is now evil and evil is now good. I mean, we, we, we see... The world and the state that it is right now right but remember that god god already knew the end from the beginning he knew before he spoke light he said i will choose this person for my glory you were born in the very moment that god said and predestined you to become born and it's for a purpose remember right you were born for a purpose and that is to glorify jesus christ but don't give up don't think that it's the end because trials are coming because there's going to be many more trials ahead of in this life before Christ returns but each one is so that we can learn a lesson and learn about God's love and about God's grace but not to use his love as a license to sin God came to separate us from a life of sin the law couldn't do that the law brought condemnation it says the letter kills but the spirit gives life and that spirit is a free gift by the, Beth, by the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I, I, I have a TikTok, and I, I made a video a while ago, and it started to blow up. And I saw comments upon comments about just the fact, that, and I was saying, listen, are you playing games with God? Are you playing games with God? If you say you believe, are you truly in Christ? And man, did I tell you I've never got more hatred upon it. You know, I counted it as joy, right? That's what we're supposed to do, right? But man, the amount of hatred and the amount of disgust that people have for Jesus Christ is just beyond any other religion. Hatred upon hatred. He, oh, he, yeah, he was a real person, but not the son of God. Oh, you believe in that Sky Daddy fairy tale? Just the amount of abominations and ignorance that people spew. I, I forget, right? Because, you know, I, I preach the word and everybody I come in contact, they know who I am. They know what I stand for. I'm not perfect. But praise the Lord, we have a perfect Savior who will perfect His Spirit and love inside of our lives until the day Jesus Christ returns. And that's something I stand on. That's something I want to preach to you guys. That we're not here to be continually perfect, but we are to be matured and perfect in Christ. It, 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 being able to show the love of God, but also represent Christ in His holiness. Jesus said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Why would God give us a command that we're not able to fulfill? Are we able to do it on our own? No, 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 right? Because our righteousness is that as filthy rags. But by the grace of God and through prayer and asking the Lord, it says, knock and it shall be opened. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. There needs to be a seeking on our heart to be able to truly believe that Christ's blood is enough to, enough to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God will deliver you, you ask. You seek, God will give you grace. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's what it says in the word. And I, I'm I, just, just a short video just to encourage you guys. Forget the mockers and scoffers. Forget the people that come against you because they came against Christ. But he was a lamb who went to slaughter and didn't say one word. So listen, turn the other cheek, guys. People in your own family hating you because you decided to pick up your cross and deny yourself and follow Jesus. Forget about the persecution. Pray for them because God, if he changed you and I, a filthy sinner, a nasty sinner, and he, he turned us into a saint of the Lord, praise the living God that he's still doing a work. That's all I want to say. Continue to seek the Lord because the days are short. Be about the Father's business because we don't have a lot of time, guys. And I'm going to continue to say that day in and day out. God bless you all in the name of the living God, our Savior, the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ.